At the end of this day, one shall stand, one shall fall. Welcome back Autobots, the Decepticons, and everything in between to Tales of Production, the series where I take a look at the production of the various Transformers movies and tell you some interesting stories that went down. Today's is going to cover the lost IMAX extended cut of Transformers 2007, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, the Transformers 2007 movie officially released in the United States on July 3rd, 2007. However, an extended cut of the film featuring footage not in the original was released to IMAX theaters on September 21st, 2007. The IMAX edition of the movie featured two minutes of additional footage in the form of slightly extended scenes and very brief new scenes, the first of which was a scene of Sam's best friend Miles. Before heading to the lake party, Sam is shown picking up Miles at his house. Upon seeing Sam's car, Miles derides Sam's choice of car colors. According to viewers of the IMAX cut, this is how the dialogue played out. It's yellow? But it has racing stripes. But it's yellow. $4,000 and all he can say, it's yellow? Now this scene gave Miles some much needed screen time, since he isn't in the film very long, disappearing partway through without a trace. And I plan to do a video explaining what happened to him in the future, so stay tuned. Another scene that was added was an extended scene of Sam at the police station. After he is done being questioned by the sheriff, he is given two Say No bumper stickers, and is shown the This Is Your Brain On Drugs PSA starring Rachel Lee Cook. Part of the scene can be seen on the Special Features DVD for Transformers 2007. However, it appears to take place after the events above. Now tell me what happened. No, no, you said you'd pick me up, no questions asked. I know, that was a deal. Pop, remember how Grey Graves pretty much flew over the cuckoo's nest? Uh-huh. Think it could have been passed on to me like a mutant with wiki gene? Another scene that was present in the IMAX cut was an extended version of the scene where Simmons is interrogating Sam and Michaela. When Simmons says criminals are hot, he eyes Michaela a little bit longer than he does in the regular cut. It then cuts to Michaela looking at Simmons with an anchored expression. During this, Simmons keeps talking, saying, I understand the attraction. I've been down that path myself. After this, Agent Simmons uses a device to monitor Sam's pupil dilation to see if he's telling the truth. The second to last scene that was added was yet another Simmons scene. As we know in the regular cut, upon arriving at the Hoover Dam, Agent Simmons talks about everyone being exposed to the NBEs. However, this scene in the IMAX cut was longer, with there being a small chat between Simmons and Lennox. According to viewers of the IMAX cut, this is how the dialogue played out. Ever heard of Area 51? Yeah? This is 50. After hearing this, Lennox looks grim. A few minutes after this scene, Simmons gives a long speech about all of the US presidents that have toured Sector 7, and gave each of them nicknames. According to viewers, Simmons called Bill Clinton Bubba. Now, the final scene that was added was an extended scene of Lennox getting the radios from a pawn shop. In the film, it zooms in on the pawn shop logo, and the next shot after shows Lennox running out of the store and handing the radios to Epps. However, in the IMAX cut, it showed Lennox going inside and arguing with the pawn shop clerk about the price of the radios. He tries to sell the lady his watch and that doesn't work. What finally does work is him saying, you're way too cute to be pointing that gun at me. And with that, that was what the additional two minutes of extra footage of the IMAX edition included according to IMDB, the TF Wiki, and several first-hand accounts on TFW2005 who saw it. However, there was some more footage according to these first-hand accounts that the TF Wiki and IMDB don't mention. So take what you're about to hear with a grain of salt. During the scene where Lennox and his crew were walking in the desert, there was an additional couple of seconds prior to them stopping to look at the picture Epps took of Blackout. When Defense Secretary John Keller gave a speech about the Sox and Forward Operations Base being attacked, the speech was slightly longer. Sergeant Patrick Donnelly points his gun at the ground and looks alert before getting impaled by Scorponok. Instead of just standing around acting like he doesn't notice anything unusual going on as he does in the original cut. When Bumblebee transforms to defend Sam and Michaela, there's an additional second or two of footage of them between Bumblebee's legs, showing them looking at Barricade as he comes in. When Jazz's visor pops up after taking the Sector 7 weapons at the crash site, the sound effect that was used in the theatrical release was omitted. Before being locked into the room where they used the AllSparks energy to create Nokia Bot, there was slightly more exposition. When Sector 7 and the military had a standoff, there is one extra shot of about two seconds when everybody draws their guns on each other. Right before Tom Banachek says, whoa, 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 there's an establishing shot that shows exactly where everyone is standing. 
And lastly, the scene where Starscream battles Ratchet and Ironhide is extended by about three seconds. The extended footage showed Ratchet and Ironhide firing off more rounds at Starscream before he transformed and flew away. Now the last and final thing that the IMAX edition had and was the main selling point for it was the IMAX itself. Though the film wasn't shot in IMAX, it would be processed for that size using IMAX's digital media remastering process. This process involves scanning the original film elements of the movie, digitally processing them, and then printing the process image on 70mm film. According to several first-hand accounts, the CGI was a lot more cleaned up, with the robots looking even more incredible, popping way more than they did in the regular theatrical release. Now, with all the added goodies to the IMAX cut, you now may be wondering why it was never released. And, well, that is because Michael Bay said that it would never come to DVD. On September 18th, 2007, three days before the IMAX cut was released, Michael Bay made a post on his official form site stating, I saw the IMAX print and it was awesome. It is the future of cinema to see movies in this format. I'm going to see Transformers one last time and get ready to gear up for Transformers 2. I added two minutes of additional stuff for the IMAX that will never make it into any DVDs. There will never be an extended edition. About the DVD, I liked a two-disc set. It has all the extras that the others don't have. It is the definitive edition of Transformers. It really breaks it down how we made the movie. Anyway, I hope you like the IMAX print. Sincerely, Bay. Now, to this day, Bay has kept to his word since these two minutes of extra footage have never been released. However, Paramount Pictures holds the distribution rights to the film. So even if Bay did not want this footage to come out, Paramount would have the final say. In addition to this, Michael Bay in recent years has stepped down from being the director of the series, now taking a role as a producer, allowing other directors a chance to put their own spin on the series. So it's likely that Bay has less control over the series than he once did. So considering what I just stated, it appears that Bay's word regarding the release of this footage holds very little weight. So with that said, there may be some hope for us to finally get a chance to watch these two extra minutes for ourselves. Now, around three months from this video's posting, the 2007 film will be turning 15 this year, and it is possible that we could get a 15-year anniversary edition. Now, anniversary editions for Transformers films has happened, since the 86 film has gotten a 20th, 30th, and 35th anniversary edition. However, up to this point in time, no live-action movies have gotten one. So to hopefully change this fact, I've created a change.org petition which you can sign using the link in the description below. Hopefully this petition can spark some discussion about the IMAX cut, and if we get enough signatures we may be able to make it happen. I'll be honest, these petitions are really hit or miss. And there is no guarantee that we will end up getting the IMAX cut on DVD. However, when fans do come together, they are able to accomplish some impossible feats. A reason why getting this cut released is possible is because IMAX editions have been released for the Transformers films. The IMAX cut for Revenge of the Fallen was released to DVD as a Walmart exclusive called the Two Disc Big Screen Edition, and had a few extended scenes in the forest battle that weren't present in the theatrical release. The IMAX cut of Age of Extinction was released to DVD in a 3D Blu-ray combo pack, and all releases of The Last Night were formatted IMAX style, including the basic DVD. And the reason for that is because 98% of the film was shot using IMAX cameras. Dark of the Moon is really the only odd one out. But just like the 07 film, no IMAX cameras were used during its production. But it did get released in IMAX theaters after going through IMAX's digital media remastering process. But to get back on track, another reason why a 15-year anniversary edition is possible is because Paramount loves to re-release the 2007 film. Currently, there are multiple editions of that film that either came in bundles or were sold on its own in varying different formats. Some releases came with different packaging and others even came with a toy. And this excludes all the various digital releases you could get over the years. Another release of the 07 film would just benefit Paramount financially, especially if they gave people the incentive to buy the film once again. That incentive of course being the extra footage from the IMAX release. And honestly, if we show Paramount that we want this cut by making enough noise, these two minutes of additional footage may actually see the light of day once again. So if you would like to contribute, feel free to sign the petition and spread the word. And just like that, that was the Lost IMAX Extended Cut. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Tales of Production playlist for some more awesome stories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. It means a lot, and it helps keep my channel running. So, a big fat thank you to you guys. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro. Thank you.